Hi, I'm Joe Roth. At New Jersey Sharing Network, we're committed to saving and enhancing people's lives through organ and tissue donation and informing people about our life-saving mission. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation, NJM, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and more, with a focus on safety and financial stability. The Russell Berry Foundation, the Northward Center, QualCare Inc., a managed care company administering health plans that care about your health care. Berkeley College, and by PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. Promotional support provided by Commerce Magazine, and by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You got about, this? Here it is, man. Look at that. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> when you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. Steve Adubato here in Ainsworth Park in New York City over on the east side. Tackle Kids Cancer, Hackensack, UMC, together with the uh, New York football Giants. Big night here to raise money for pediatric cancer research. Um, whether you're a Giants fan, you're connected to the Hackensack community, or just anywhere in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area, and you care about kids dealing with cancer, tonight is a night to raise money. We'll be talking to Eli Manning from the football Giants and some of the other executives at the Giants, as well as the clinical team, the doctors and the researchers, folks involved in clinical trials. Tonight is a great night, a night for anyone who cares about children dealing with cancer. Tackle Kids Cancer, what a powerful campaign. Check out the next half hour. It's a half hour of television you don't want to miss. We're here with the, uh, he's a quarterback on a lot of levels. Bob Garrett is the president and chief executive officer of Hackensack University Health Network. I've never been called quarterback before, thank you. Yeah, well, we'll have Eli Manning here in just a few <laughs> minutes. Um, describe this initiative, Bob, and, and uh, forget about the fact that the Giants are your favorite football team. What's it feel like to work with them together? Shoulder to shoulder on this. This is amazing. Tackle Kids Cancer is just a great partnership between Hackensack University Medical Center and the New York football Giants. We've had a great partnership for six years now with the Giants. We've done community events together. We've done um, health uh, fairs. We've done wellness screenings. We opened a fitness and wellness center together. And now the relationship is really moving to a new level where we're focused on raising money to wipe about childhood cancer through Tackle Kids Cancer. You know, when you see the spots, it was just looking at one of the spots, the TV spots. There's this beautiful little kid um, that Eli comes in and sees. You know the kid I'm talking about. When you first saw it, I mean, you, your team put these together with the Giants. What was it like the first time you saw that? Very, very emotional. You know, I, I was saying to, to somebody just recently, Steve, when I see these kids in the hallway, as long as I've been in the field, when I pass by a child that has cancer, I just... I you mean in your place? In, in, at Hackensack, or, or any place, but, but certainly I'm familiar with them at Hackensack. It is so emotional. It is. It, it just gets to me each and every time. And when I saw the interaction between Eli Mann and these kids and how they lit up when uh, when Eli just appeared in the hospital room like magic it was incredible I can't tell you the goosebumps I had all over it was amazing is that what you envision with tackle kids cancer I mean the foundations involved and the raising the money is huge yes. but did you envision the the part where the an Eli Manning and the players would have that personal connection with kids and their families? I think it's just uh, wonderful. I mean, Eli Manning is such a genuine person, and when he enters the room and talks to these kids, it is done without any pre pretension. It is done from his heart. You can see it. And I'm not surprised because the New York Giants are that kind of organization. They're a, a class organization. Uh, they are community-minded. And Hackensack being the hometown hospital of the New York Giants, uh, this is we want to do what we can to help our community. And this is a great way to do it. Let's talk about the raising of the money, where it goes and the impact it's going to have and is having right now. Yeah, so the money entirely, every cent of the money that is being raised is going to go to the uh, program at the uh, Children's Cancer Institute for either the clinical program or for research. And the goal, and this is a pretty lofty goal, but the goal is to eliminate 
childhood cancer. And you know what? We're probably in this nation about 75% of the way there. So many childhood cancers have either been reduced or eliminated over the last generation. We got to go that extra mile now and get the job done. Why are we so far behind in this? Bob, there's been so much money spent on cancer, uh, so much focus in it, but not pediatric cancer. You know, I, th I, I think um, there's just been a big focus on, on adults because more adults uh, do come down with cancer, you know, over the course of a lifetime. But it is just so sad to see a, a child with this type of disease where they have their whole life in front of them. So I, I think that um, with raising awareness through programs like Tackle Kids Cancer, we can really get the, at the attention of the public and, and focus our time, our energy, and our money toward eliminating these types of diseases. Yeah, finally, we're here in tonight uh, in New York City raising money uh, because raising money through the Hackensack um, Foundation is a big part of what's being done. Uh, the Giants are coming tonight. I see some of uh, the Giants executives, some of your friends are here. Um, describe what tonight's going to be like, because there's a big crowd gathering on the street, because especially when the Giants win, there's a lot of people gathering on the street. What's it going to be like tonight? I tell you what, it's certainly going to be a lot better than if they had lost yesterday, but um, it's, it's great. I mean, um, again, the New York Giants, the players, the staff, the executives, the Mara family, the Tisch family, what a, what a great... They're all in. They're all in. I mean, you know, that's, that's a phrase, but it, it, really, it really describes how they feel and how they have been partners with Hackensack University Medical Center. This is really an amazing leap for our partnership together. And uh, I, I could not be more excited to see so many players here, see Eli Manning quarterbacking this thing, and he, he is truly the quarterback. You, you uh, take a step back for him, don't you? Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. I mean, listen, I'm a great Giants fan, and I have nothing but respect for Eli. And you know what, the, the thing about Eli is all the, all the things that he's done off the field are so impressive. And you know, one thing I just read about just today is he was just ranked and named as one of the top 20 philanthropists under the age of 40. Pretty amazing. For he never seeks attention. Never seeks attention. So modest, but so genuine. So we're happy to have him on board. Happy to, happy to have him on the Tackle Kids Cancer team. Congratulations, Bob. We're uh, pleased to be covering it. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. We're talking with uh, Eli Manning, who is uh, the quarterback for the, um, the Giants. But tonight's a big night. Tackle Kids Cancer. Talk about why it's so big, Eli. You know, it's just uh, one of the toughest things for me to see is a, a child that has to spend a long period of time in a hospital. And uh, when, when the diagnosis is cancer and you, you see um, what it means for the families that have to go through that. And, you know, no, no child, no family should have to go through that. And so that's why I wanted to team up with Hackensack UMC because uh, you've seen their staff, those doctors, and, and their optimism that they can, they can cure these kids. And, uh, you know, these kids are so strong. They're so determined to get to get well. They're going through the toughest times of their lives, but they do it with a smile on their face, and, and they're such a great inspiration and, and want to do everything I can do to get them back with their friends, with their families, in their school, laughing and doing the things that kids should be doing. Eli, you did a, a spot. You have three daughters, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. What are the ages? Uh, four, uh, two years old, and then nine months old. If I can put you on the spot and ask you this, there's a, there's a spot that... Um, a lot of us have seen there are a lot of really powerful spots. There was a little boy that that you wound up visiting in one of these um, spots in connection with Tackle Kids Cancer that is just so powerful. This little kid, um, I don't know if he was surprised at seeing you or not, but he just kind of, you blew him away and he blew you away. And you know the kid I'm talking about? The little kid with the blondish hair and he's in the spot. What was that like for you? You know, to see, um, you know, saw a lot of, lot of kids when I visited the hospital, but um, you know, sometimes you don't know when you visit them if, if you're making a difference or not. And, and you don't know if... if uh, you really don't. You see it in their eyes, right? You know, sometimes you do. Sometimes, you know, you see a guy right away. Sometimes, you know, you may leave, and, and, but you, you might, you know, check in with, the, with the, uh, the doctor or somebody will get back to you saying, hey, you know, after you left, I know the kid might be a little shy, a little nervous at the time, but after you left, you know, he lit up for the next week. And he, you know, talking to his family about it, his friends, and it really made a difference in, in his outlook. And, and that's what makes you, you know, keep coming back. And, and some are obvious and some, you know, some are fired up and know who you are. Some, some may not or they're a little shy, but uh, you feel like you are making a difference. Just uh, taking the time to visit them and, and obviously now doing it on a bigger, a bigger scale and trying to raise money, raise funds, get the, the best care that these kids can get to get them, get them cured, get them back living a normal life. Finally, do you feel you and your colleagues, your, your teammates on the Giants have a responsibility to do this? 
You know, I, I think when, when you're, you're in the spotlight and you, you play for an organization uh, and, you know, you, you want to be involved in the community. You, you want to give back in some way. Um, and, and that's how I feel. And I think, uh, but you want to find something that, that you're passionate about. You want to find something that means something to you. You're not just doing something because you feel you have to do something. You're doing something because you want to help these people. Uh, it, it's something that's moved you. It's something that's touched your heart. And when you, when you visit you know, a hospital and you see these kids that are, that are struggling for their lives, and, but you see how strong they are. You see how they just, you know, they, they get up and they do it. They don't have an option. They just keep fighting. They're fighting for their lives and you want to help them out any way you can. And, and, and I think that's why you get involved. That's why you want to, you know, bring some of your teammates and let them see this. Let them see what people are going through, how blessed we are and what they're going through and how we can help out these other people that are going through tough times in their lives. Thank you, Eli. Thank you. I said, Eli, that, he, that Bob Garrett was the quarterback. He's a quarterback at Hackensack, but do you, do you hand the ball off to him for tackle kids cancer? I just want to make sure. I, sa I said that uh, the true quarterback is Eli Manning, both off the field and on the field, and he's the quarterback at tackle kids cancer. So we're happy to have him as our partner and as our quarterback. You accept that? I accept it. I accept <laughs> it, and uh, it's, a, it's a great challenge, but happy to be uh, part of this cause and, and uh, joined up with Hackensack UMC. and, and uh, tackling kids' cancer. That's, that's the goal, and, and we're working towards that. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at steveadubato. We're here with uh, Chris Napoli, who uh, was a patient over at the uh, Cancer Institute at Hackensack. You're 20 years old? 21 now. 20, sorry about that. 20 when I was diagnosed. <laughs> Tell folks what you were dealing with. Well, I was a 20-year-old college student playing college football and studying business down at the College of New Jersey, getting ready to head down to school late July for football camp when I was diagnosed. And, um, you know, it had really struck me from out of nowhere. It came completely from left field, you know, didn't expect it, didn't really see any signs coming of it, and it really kind of just took a lot away from me then, you know. Took me out of my normal routine life, was no longer a college student, was then home in a hospital for the next eight months. Eight months? Eight months, and not, not consecutively. Um, I was outpatient treated, but um, about four or five days a week I was in the hospital receiving chemotherapy. And, um, you know, those were some of the eight toughest months of my life, hands down, no question about it. But, however, you know, Hackensack University Medical Center and the New York Giants played a huge part in helping me get through those eight months. How so? Um, you know, the doctors and nurses, child life specialists, everyone at the hospital had really, you know, played a large part. First of all, the doctors and nurses had controlled my health, done a great job, had gotten me to here to be here today had, um, you know, given me the opportunity to live a healthy life again. The child life specialists, everyone else at the hospital, um, you know, did a great job keeping me in positive spirits with a positive mindset and, you know, assured me that I could get through this tough time. Along with the New York Giants, they also played a big part in that. Um, you know, some of my toughest times last fall, the New York Giants had come in to visit the players? The players, the players, oh, the Giants rookies, Odell Beckham, uh, Devon. Beckham came in. Beckham came in. What was that like? That was pretty cool, you know. You get to see them all dressed up in Halloween costumes. You know, it, it, it was really a different atmosphere in the um, Rutan Clinic that day. It wasn't every day in the pediatric cancer clinic you see all the patients smiling and all the parents smiling and everyone in such high spirits with such positive um, vibes going on throughout the day. They um, knew you were an athlete? They didn't know I was an athlete yet. We had gotten to that point. We had talked about that. But um, then later on when I had met Eli, he had known I was an athlete. You know, we had talked Eli Manning. Football. Eli Manning, correct. And we had talked some football this past summer. He came in, had a nice talk for about 20, 30 minutes. And, you know, it was just really something that meant a lot to me to uh, see that these players take such time out of their day to help people in need, you know, to get... What did it do for you? It, it really made me feel as if I could conquer anything, you know. 
seeing these athletes, people who I looked up to, um, being a college athlete, seeing, you know, looking up to these people my whole life, seeing them come in and offer me well wishes and, you know, telling me inspirational stories and stuff that will help me get through my day really meant a lot. It really, you know, helped me make strides in my treatment and my fight against cancer and has helped me get to where I am today, healthy, in remission, cancer-free, and back as a full-time college student. What message would you send, Chris, to everybody out there watching right now who may be dealing with the folks who are dealing with some pretty tough issues, particularly those connected with cancer, um, young people in particular? You know, I would, I would like to tell those people out there that you never stop fighting, you know. You, no matter what goes wrong, there's always a positive you can find in it. And the child life specialists at the hospital, the nurses, the doctors, the New York Giants really helped me find those positives throughout my battle against cancer in the darkest times of my life. Um, you know, it was times when I had to wake up knowing I needed to come to the hospital for treatment, dreaded coming to the hospital. And, you know, people like that had really pushed me through and gotten me to where I am today. So, although they may not be able to be there for everyone, they do a very good job in portraying the fact that there are positives in everyone's fight, in everyone's negative experience. You've actually said it was a blessing. What do you mean by that? What I meant by my cancer experience being a blessing was the lessons I have learned from having everything taken away from me. Having, you know, my college life um, taken away from me for eight months and not being able to see my friends, not being able to go out, not being able to do the things I love to do most, not being able to play football, um, you know, it really was hard to deal with. But it made me realize that there's more important things in life. It made me realize what really matters the most to me, my family, my friends, my health. It made me realize that those little things that you get worked up about all the time really don't mean much. And it made me realize how much I took for granted prior to this, you know. And after my experience, after, you know, looking back on it, I can proudly say that I'm more grateful and more involved in helping find a cure for this awful disease. You a better person? Absolutely better person, I feel. Um, definitely, you know. Before my experience, I never thought I would be standing here doing something like this. Afterwards, I, I seek the urge to help others. Um, it just is it's a part of me now, especially kids with similar experiences. It really, you know, being able to relate to them and seeing how tough it is to go through these treatments and these tough times, it really makes me want to help lend, uh, lend a helping hand and, you know, go out of my way to help others. Congratulations and keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, Chris. Thank you very much. We're here with uh, Allison Stengaby, who is the Vice President of Community Relations with the New York Giants. Allison, a night like this, the Giants and Hackensack coming together tackle kids' cancer, but there are a whole range of community activities that the Giants are involved in, right? We are involved in a lot of different projects at this time. Uh, tomorrow, we're going back up to the Hack, uh, Hackensack University Medical Center for our annual rookie Halloween party that we started. That's a big deal. Huge. <laughs> well, we love it. Kind of started off as like, let's go to the hospital, let's pump, paint pumpkins, let's do this, let's do that, and it's grown into an annual event. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, we've got to be close to 12 years, 12, 13 years doing that at this point. Getting the Giants players to be actively involved in tackle kids' cancer. Talk about it. Easy. It, Easy? You know, it, it, here it is. We do a lot of make-a-wishes. We do a lot of things with kids with cancer. These guys melt. They rally around these kids. We had a kid in the locker room last night. These guys were, knew that this kid had a life-threatening disease, and they rallied around this kid. And he had given the team speech on Saturday at practice. These kids really make these guys realize what they're doing and how fortunate they are to be able to have the jobs that they have. They're, not, they're tackling play, other players. They're not tackling kids' cancer or some life-threatening disease. They've got, they, they definitely know what, how lucky they are and what they're working towards when they're doing their community initiatives. Allison, describe in detail the level of involvement of the Giants in this initiative. 
we are, we started with assisting with the creation of it and we're all invested. So right from uh, John Mara all the way down. So John Mara believes in it. It's something he feels strongly about. We got him on board. Eli Manning then we spoke to about it. He's on board. Um, front office is on board, whatever we can do. We were just in the car coming in. Everybody's like saying, I want to go to the rookie Halloween party. I'm like trying to negotiate who's going where. Everybody wants to go to the rookie Halloween party. Rookies know when they come in, when we first meet with them, you're going to do that rookie Halloween party come October. So get ready, you're dressing up. But it, it's a full, and everybody's bought into it. It's a full investment on the whole team on every level. Before I let you go, the Hackensack connection is strong. Huge. I, we were saying, I came to the team 25 years ago. 25 years ago? I did 25 years ago when we first started bringing the players and the wives up. When I, there was a plaque in the old building that was dedicated in 1987 from the Giants' wives, I think from Super Bowl 21. So it's been a long standing tradition that we have a relationship with Hack and Sack, and we're going to continue that. Thanks so much, Al. My pleasure. Good to see you. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We're going to flip things around a little bit. You like that, John? Uh, at the NJA convention, 2015 NJA convention in Atlantic City. We're here with John Bergman, teacher, author, and flipped learning pioneers. Fifth or sixth book? Oh, we've written six books. Steve. All right, sixth book. This uh, book is called Flip Your Classroom. What is this flip thing about? It's a crazy easy idea. So the students watch the lecture at home. So teachers create a short video they watch at home. And then in class, they do what they used to do at home. You're flipping the homework and the lecture. Why and how did you come up with this? Well, it was a story. We were, we were, our assistant superintendent came down to us one day and she said, my daughter's teacher's recording his lessons like you are, and she loves it because she doesn't have to go to class anymore. And that's when we said, wait a second, what if we rethink what needs to happen in class? And so when we flip this, kids get the help with the hard material in the class with the teacher present. Because right now, kids go home in a traditional classroom and they get stuck on homework. There's no one there to help them. But in a flipped classroom, the teacher's there to help them with the hard stuff. When you were first starting this, John, what was the reaction of educators? They loved it, actually. It was, it was a quick thing. They said, boy, I should have thought of that. It's a simple, simple idea that has profound implications. I'm seeing this work all over the world. I, I leave for Korea next week. I was in Australia last week. It's amazing to see this working in every subject in every level, in every socioeconomic stratus, it is working. Break it down, the flip classroom in one subject versus another as to how it would work. Now, the key question by subject is this, what's the best use of your face-to-face -face class time? A teacher only has so many minutes with their class. So let's say a high school math teacher, they got 52 minutes, whatever it is, with their kids every day. What's the best use of that time? I'm gonna argue it's not you standing up and yakking at your kids. What's wrong with something that? Something else. Well, the kids- I call lecturing, you call it yakking. <laughs> The problem with that is that some kids can't process at the pace the teacher's at. Some kid is here, they're lower, they can't get it, they, they were lost yesterday and they're lost today, and some kids are bored. So every teacher has to teach to the middle if they're doing the lecture. But if they can watch this short video, they can consume it at their own pace, the one that they're ready for. Is it better in language arts versus math, one subject versus another? No, it works in all the subjects. I mean, we've just finished five books. Flip the science classroom, flip the math, the English, the social studies, each a separate book, and the elementary classroom. It's working in all subjects at all grade levels. So when you go to another country, right, describe the kind of reaction you've gotten in different countries and whether you face any resistance. Essentially, we're seeing it the same in all the countries, yes. I mean, what it looks like in Korea than it looks like in the United States actually looks a lot the same. Teachers and kids are kind of the same everywhere. They, they're going to consume the content, and they need more time, frankly, for active learning. In Asia, it's been interesting to watch. In that culture, there's not a lot of active learning. Let's just say in their educational system. Kids are sitting and listening to lectures, even like in the third grade level. But when they, I walked into the flipped classrooms, the kids are actively doing stuff because the lower level content, that's, got, that's out of the way with these videos. Talk about the, the impact it has on students in terms of what they actually take away and as you perceive it or what the, um, the evidence is, the data is, in terms of how much they actually quote unquote learn. So uh, a big study is about to come out of the UK, like a big meta study, they got like a 
$1.8 million to run the study with 18 schools, and they're showing about a 7% increase in test scores. This is a school system that has like 62 languages spoken, low socioeconomics, and it's working. And we've got a lot of data similar to that here in the United States and actually in Asia and in, in uh, Norway and whatnot that's showing increase in student achievement. But we also have some data that says that teachers are happier because, um, well, because kids are learning, frankly. And uh, kids are also saying they like it better because, here's a quote I heard from a kid, finally somebody's teaching the way I learn, right? We're teaching the YouTube generation, like it or not. They've all got one of these stuck in their... How does, that, how does that change teaching? Well, we need to spend less time with information dissemination and more time having them actively do stuff with the learning. And Flipped gives teachers a way to have more active things. So, for example, for me as a high school science teacher, I was able to do 50% more experiments with my kids because of the flipped classroom. And my test scores went up one standard deviation. I mean, much more hands-on activities. You've been teaching science for how long? 24 years. You flipped your approach when? 2006, 2007, we flipped. So after 19 years of teaching, that's when I, I and Aaron Sams, uh, the teacher next door, um, came up with this idea of the flipped classroom. Finally, at a convention like this, the NJA 2015 convention, what kind of reaction are you getting here? Enthusiastic. The NJEA teachers are like, many of them haven't heard of it, and they're like, what is this? And it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> my sessions got bigger and bigger. It's just like, you got to hear John, I think. <laughs> um, but just, they're enthusiastic, interested, curious, wanting to know more. Uh, there's still, I think, a need. Like, uh, at the convention, I've been really talking about why you should flip and not how. There's just not enough time to do the how. There's details, and I think they, that's the next stage for a lot of the NJE teachers is let's get the how. Methodology. The methodology, and that's where I like to do workshops around the world. It takes like a day, two days. These are the kinds of things that, that you know, that you have to learn how to do it. And if folks want to find out more, finally? Yeah, go to my website, flippedclass.com. You can learn a lot of tools. Books are there, so I encourage you to go there. Thanks, John. Yeah, great meeting you, Steve. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-One -on -One with Steve Adubato has been provided by New Jersey Sharing Network, NJM, the Russell Berry Foundation, the Northward Center, Qualcare Inc., Berkeley College, and by PSE&G. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Hi, I am Dominique Lee. I was recognized in 2015 with the Russ Berry Award for making a difference for helping revitalize our school system in Newark. The award had a significant impact in my life. Help us identify and honor the unsung heroes in your New Jersey community who go unnoticed in their efforts to make a difference in the lives of others. You can nominate someone today for the Russ Berry Award for making a difference. The deadline for nominations is February 19, 2016.